من إبريق شاي واحد إلى مكان شهير وغريب يزدحم بآلاف أباريق الشاي من كل الأصناف بدأت الحكاية في المملكة المتحدة وتحديدا في مدينة يالدينغ عام 1983 عندما تلقت السيدة سو بلازي هدية من جدتها كانت عبارة عن إبريق شاي وعلى إثرها سكن السيدة هوس بجمع أباريق الشاي ونقلت العدوى إلى العائلة والأصدقاء بدأت المجموعة تكبر سنة بعد الأخرى وضاق بها المنزل لتعبر السيدة بلازي النهر وتحول مقهى متواضعا كان يقدم الطعام والشراب للصيادين إلى متحف لأباريق الشاي وملحقاتها وعلى ضفة النهر وقرب الجسر العتيق تأسس المشروع وأطلق عليه اسم جزيرة إبريق الشاي Tipa Island is a unique place. Um, there is nowhere else in the world that's the same as us. غيرت جزيرة إبريق الشاي وجه المكان الذي كان بسيطا ومغمورا ليصبح مشهورا على مستوى العالم خاصة بعد دخوله مجموعة جينيس للأرقام القياسية عام 2004 وتغيرت معه حياة جيران الجزيرة التي يزورها سكان بريطانيا والسياح وأيضا مشاهير الفن والسياسة للتمتع بمشاهدة تصاميم قديمة وجديدة وأخرى غريبة لأباريق الشاي وهناك أيضا فسحة للتمتع بطقوس شرب الشاي بنكهة خاصة جدا The trouble is, these aren't real teapots. It's an ornament rather than actual practical reason why you buy it. People don't necessarily use them, but they are fun to have. يكاد الشاي أن يكون مشروبا وطنيا في بريطانيا. له أوقاته خلال اليوم، وأيضا طقوس خاصة وإتيكيت صارم. To an Englishman, tea is tea. وجاءت هذه الجزيرة لتمنح تلك الطقوس بعدا آخر. عنوانه إبريق الشاي Hello and welcome coming to the teapots of Teapot Island When Mum started to collect teapots back in 1983, it was normal shaped teapots. No novelty, just a standard shape hand and spout teapot. The first teapot we had given to us is in the exhibition and it has got its name on it. It says a present from my nan and that was the first one. And the second one actually was from her sister-in-law and she gave me one of the same age and it was a present to her when she was younger. Her collection all started from these two teapots. My great-grandmothers, my great-aunts. Now, if these were milk jugs, it may end up having been a milk jug island rather than teapot island, and there would be hundreds and thousands of milk jugs, but teapots is what it was, and that's where the collection began. And so my great aunt and my great grandmother said, oh, here, to my mum, and said, have these. These were our wedding presents from 30 years ago. Put them in your cupboard and then you have something to show. And it was two teapots. From those two teapots, it then become four teapots. And then that cupboard was full and then they filled another cupboard and mum would only collect the traditional style teapots. So for the next 10, 15 years, the collection was only standard shaped teapots, nothing special, no novelty teapots, just pure, plain, handle and spout teapots. The most difficult thing we ever found when we had teapots was to get more room, because it's always, always running out of room. I didn't, I'll buy anything, I won't not turn, up, turn a teapot down, I'll find a way to get the money, I'll get a loan or something, I'll get the money for everything I haven't got, but I can't find the room to put them all. 
So in our house, as I was growing up, um, the teapots expanded from one room to the next to the next. Um, we didn't have any teapots in my bedroom, we didn't have any teapots in my parents' bedroom, but they were in the bathrooms, in the toilets, in the games rooms, every place you can think of, the dining room, it had teapots. And they were all from the ceiling down to about shelf, shelf height, all the way around. In 2002 and 2003, they, we had the Guinness World Records come to us and say, we'd like to put you in the, in the record books um, for the collection of teapots. And so that's great, brilliant. It was, it was amazing to, to have the recognition for that. Didn't expect to be collecting teapots all our life. It was, a, it was a gift and then everybody else decided to give us presents and that's how it, it began. And then we went out shopping and we bought them as well. And it just got bigger and bigger. So we have teapots that obviously come in all different shapes and sizes, whether it be animals, whether it be people, they come, as I say, in everything you can think of. Uh, everyone asks, oh, what is it worth using a teapot now? Because so many people would put a tea bag into a mug and boil their kettle and pour it into their mug and the tea's okay. A shay. هذا المشروب المرتبط بالثقافة البريطانية الاجتماعية لم يكن كذلك في الماضي حتى منتصف القرن السابع عشر كان البريطانيون يفضلون شرب القهوة على الشاي حتى جاء التغيير من داخل القصور الملكية البريطانية من خلال الأميرة البرتغالية كاثرين دي براغانزا وهي أميرة برتغالية تعشق الشاي والتي تزوجها الملك تشارلز الثاني عام 1662 This collection of teapots is actually my mum's collection of teapots. Uh, we started collecting when I was about two years old. We started to collect teapots in um, 1983. We had a new kitchen in our house where we lived before, before Teapot Island and my grandmother gave me a teapot and that is what started te me collecting teapots and that's how, it's, that's how the, it began. They went into the exhibition we started collecting more and more teapots over the years. Uh, we moved to here uh, in 2002 and we brought 3,000 teapots with us. We used to have friends of friends used to say, oh, can I, are we, are we can, can I bring my friends to your house to see your teapots? They say people come, used to, I didn't even know who they were, which is I knew the lady and she'd bring her friend with her. And we'd just say, oh yeah, go and have a look. And they were everywhere. And the first television program we, in, we did was um, called the Collector's Lot, um, and that and um, Lisa Goddard come, and that was the first time we was filled by done by um, video, you know, for the television, and that gave us idea. I think, oh well, perhaps we ought to show them to somebody else. Tea is tea. To an Englishman, tea is tea. You have different flavours. You have different kinds. You have, you know, we could sometimes you have Russian tea, China tea, but we have tea. To make tea properly, an Englishman make tea properly, he would heat the kettle up, the, 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 heat the teapot up, then pour it out, flush that out, put the tea in, loose tea, loose tea, tea leaves, and then he put the hot water in and let it, uh, what we call mast. You leave it there for about five minutes and then you pour it through a strainer into the, into the cup and that will be the tea. تقول الروايات إن كاثرين عندما انتقلت للعيش مع زوجها الملك تشارلز الثاني في بريطانيا جلبت معها أوراق الشاي وبفضلها وتأثيرها كزوجة للملك أصبح شرب الشاي طقسا أرستقراطيا يقتصر على الطبقة المخملية مع نهاية القرن السابع عشر صار الشاي جزءا من حياة القصور والمناسبات الملكية وسرعان ما ارتبط طقس شرب الشاي المستوحى من الصين بمظاهر الفخامة والغناء ويشرب ضمن تقاليد وخطوات وأوقات محددة وصارمة For the UK, most of our tea comes from places like India and Ceylon um, and I can't tell you when it all started we have to go back into colonial times you know, many years ago, long before I was born to actually where the tea imports came and the British 
decided that for some reason that they like tea. It is still very popular in the UK, although to be quite honest, I prefer coffee. <laughs> الزواج الملكي من الأميرة البرتغالية وطد العلاقة أكثر بين البلدين حيث منحت البرتغال بريطانيا استخدام موانئ مستعمراتها في أفريقيا وآسيا وأصبح الطريق ممهدا لدخول الشاي بسهولة وبكميات كبيرة إلى بريطانيا A friend of ours said, because we had a boat on, in a boatyard, which is just around there, oh, there's a tea cafe um, for sale in Yalding. We are in Yalding, which is on the outskirts of Maidstone. Now, most people would never heard of Yalding. Now, people think we are Yalding because they don't realise that there is a small village just along the river from us. And it's amazing how many people visit us. We have lots of uh, motorcyclists and cyclists, and they know that this is a good place for them to come. This place is called Riverside Diner, which is the same as lots and lots of other places of, of cafes, and places, they're called Riverside something. So that was a bit unoriginal. So when we bought our teapots here, we decided we was going to change it to the word Teapot Island, because we are actually an island. Because we are not able to get to Teapot Island without crossing a river. I've lived in Yalding since 2006, so that's 15 years. I've been a postmaster here for 10 years. I was a firefighter in London and I was retiring from the fire service. And the people who ran the post office, um, Margaret and Terry, they wanted to retire, they're in their 70s now, and they wanted to retire. So I said, well, I've got nothing else to do, I'll take over. And I put the application in and, yep, yeah, well, here I am. And I've been here 10 years. I've been repairing and doing antiques and clocks since 1979, quite a long time I suppose. Um, I live here with my family, um, a 23 year old son, a wife, we have two dogs and we've sort of been in the village for about four years. In medieval times, was the bridge was built in 1450, it's a stone bridge, it's the oldest and longest bridge in medieval bridge in Kent. Most of the houses, including this building, are built in the 15th and 16th centuries. It floods every now and then. We get water up to about here every now and then. Back before anybody alive remembers, there was a battle in the Civil War here. Um, back in 1640, I think it was, the English Civil War. And they had um, cannons from the, what is now the, the doctor's surgery firing over the church at the Royalists. This was a, an area for um, the Republicans at the time. I was absolutely stunned by the variety and the general kind of texture of subject matter from things like Marmite pots, you know, through to houses and shoes and chests of drawers. If you said to me, imagine a teapot, I couldn't possibly stray that far off the path. And I was stunned by the diversity. It was, it's absolutely staggering. And, and the beauty of the art that goes into it, you feel as though it should be standing in the national galleries alongside Van Gogh. Teapot Island is a unique place. There is nowhere else in the world that's the same as us. Nothing has the same scale of teapots or the knowledge of teapots because that's the other thing as well is it not only do you put them on the shelf and display them, we have a history. We know all of the teapots, where they come from, who makes them, an approximate age. Because that is our life now. We've grown, I've grown up with the teapots and it's mum's dream and her passion of collecting teapots, hence why we have so many. There's so many de different definitions, but when you see the heart and soul that's gone into something like this and recognise that it isn't mainstream art, 
when you decide you're going to make really fancy teapots uh, and generally work with ceramics, you'll probably do quite well, but you're never going to get heard of like Picasso or Van Gogh or, or, or many of the great artists, you know, the contemporary ones. And yet that, that is the beauty of it, because if you really look at it, they're driven by producing the art, not becoming well-known or rich. Yeah, it's not what drives these people. And so the beauty of it is, is, is you look at it and you know that's their heart and soul gone into it. They're not, they're not trying to, to appeal to you in an artistically, you know, uh, presented way. You know, oh, look, this is a piece of art. They're saying, look, this is what I can do. And they do it so well. My little granddaughter, who loves elephants, would love this one and um, she can put it with her collection. It is very unusual. We're out here with some old friends and we've decided to come for a walk. We've been here many times before. We had lunch in the boathouse, which is just across the river. We've been for our walk and now we've come back to Teapot Island for a cup of tea. And I spotted this. Now this is a real bargain. This is a Volkswagen camper van and it was just £1.99. And it's a teapot. And I bought this as a present for my son who really loves Volkswagen camper vans. I had a guitar. You get a guitar, a drummer, a, a, a drum. There's all different kinds of that. It's just people, people collect them. And he chose the, 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 the saxophone because his sister plays a saxophone. And it'd be a good present to give her a teapot as a saxophone. And like, what I got a guitar. My uh, son has a guitar. We'll get to buy a guitar teapot. You know? Fifty and sixty thousand pounds for a for a Volkswagen camper van. All the hippies drive them, and they paint them all fancy colours. This one's not. They paint graffiti down the sides, you know. And they're hippie vans surfing. They take them surfing. When people come here and they see all our teapots, they often say to me, oh, I've got, I've got a um, VW car uh, and you've got a teapot over there, so I want one like that. And then there'd be a lady who is a cleaner and, there's a, um, and she says, oh, look over there, there's a lady doing, um, uh, um, doing cleaning and she's dusting. And, and so they want that one. They buy something that associates with some, or they'll buy one, a dog one because their friend's got a dog the same shape as one of the teapots so they'll buy that teapot as a present for them. The majority of these teapots, because some of them are 200, 300 years old, they have been used. They would have their own story if they could tell it. The trouble is these aren't real teapots. The idea is obviously they, it's an ornament rather than actual practical reason why you buy it. See, I don't think about teapots anymore as a something to drink tea with. I think of teapots as a thing as beauty because there's the, the work that goes into them. That is a it's a work of art really. It's and that's that's why we want them to, to show people how how they're so different, how the manufacturers think and can see you know how they show their um, way of thinking about a teapot in their, in their designs. This clip pot just here, which I was just wanted to look at finding to show you, is made by Clara's Click It Glyphs and it was for the Canadian market. They sold it to the Can Canadians. But that is a, it was about £1,200, that teapot, and people don't realise just a teapot like that. You wouldn't know if you looked in this room that that one was worth that much money. When I was growing up before, teapots were even around for us, uh, I wanted to be a fireman. But uh, when I grew up, I was a little bit short for that. And back then, it had to be a certain height, which unfortunately I didn't fit. Um, so I liked cars, and so I went into the motor trade. And I worked in the motor trade for years before um, Teapot Ivor ever existed. Um, when we first opened, I would spend six months working with cars and then six months here. And, and slowly as we built the business up, and then I've now left the cars behind and I'm, I'm here full time. Uh, we, we've had lots of different TV stars uh, that have come to see us. We've also had uh, Prince Charles and, and Lady Camilla uh, come to visit us. Um, we, had, we were flooded in 2013. 
we were flooded. We had over three foot of water within the property. And um, we were invited to go to the church because Prince Charles and the Camilla were coming down to visit the places which had been affected by the flood. So Charles came straight over to us. They took, did the interview with him, showing him the teapot, which was the pot which had Queen, his mother, the Queen Elizabeth, on one side, and on the back had um, Victoria. And it was called 20th Century Queens. That's why it had the two queens on it. They were asking all the questions that normal people would ask. Uh, and, and Lady Camilla actually purchased a teapot to take home and she bought a camel teapot. And he asked her, why, why a camel? And she said, it's Camilla. This one here is Cupid's Cloud, which was my favorite teapot until Diana died. When Diana died, I changed my favorite to this one, it's not a very good likeness of her because I loved her, I, I decided to call it my favorite. Do you want a pair of scissors? Yeah. People don't necessarily use them, but, but they are fun to have. And if you've got f people around, it's a talking point. So have, have, a, have a strange, strange teapot. So I quite like it. Um, great fun, just fun. That's all you can say. You can say. It's just a fun thing to do, have a, have a funny teapot. Going back to the tigers or the eagles or the swans, they they don't look like a teapot. They are, even though they are a teapot and they're functional, so you can put your, put your tea in and still pour out of it, they don't look like it. And that's what makes it fun for people that they don't look just like an ordinary teapot. Buddy likes tea, teapots, and because they like to drink tea at four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon um, with their friends. This particular teapot was made in the United Kingdom. Yeah, also signed there uh, underneath. Okay, let's also, also have another. This one here is for more for boiling water. I might put the teapot on here. These teapots were, this is from Richard and Judy, so they sign the teapots for us and we put them into our exhibition because they're, they're nothing special. The teapot itself is, is just an ordinary shaped teapot, but it's been signed by them and it's a little bit more to the history of why we're Teapot Island. Basically, this teapot was on the windowsill in the 1942 Blitz and their teapot had tea in it and a bomb come down, blasted all the windows out and shrapnel went through into the teapot. And it was never used again, but they still kept it and people thought of Teapot Island and thought, oh, I know, let me take that down to them. And it's going to be here forever. It's a bit of history. مع مرور السنوات أصبح شرب الشاي منتشرا وسط كل طبقات المجتمع البريطاني وجزءا من ثقافته ولم يعد حكرا على القصور وبات تعبيرا وعنوانا للثقافة في بريطانيا. يرمز للمساواة بين كل أفراد المجتمع. وتحول من عادات ملكية إلى تراث شعبي فيما يعرف اليوم بطقوس الشاي خاصة احتساء الشاي بعد الظهيرة. I really enjoy being around Teapot Island. There's no question that the museum um, adds an element um, that, that people take away with them of, of something special to remember, something something extraordinary.